am I alive now? Yes. All right, hello. Good day, everybody. How are we doing? Can you hear me okay? Um, hello. <coughs> um, was it four more days until Christmas? Um, hi, this is Richard back again. <laughs> um, I think last week we kind of left off. We we're talking, we were doing, just doing some beadwork. And, uh, I was going to show the moccasins. So today these are some Navajo moccasins. Um, these are actually my, um, my daughter's. When she was little, first pair of moccasins. When she got bigger, and finally got big enough. I think those ones there are actually my mom's moccasins. She gave them to my daughter. And those are my moccasins. So today we're going to... I guess this is probably going to be like a... Maybe a four-part series. Where we're going to talk about... Um, moccasin making. I have to move the trash can real quick. Right in my shot. <laughs> so we're just gonna. This is gonna be like maybe four part, three or four part um, little series. Um, kind of break it up a little bit because you know moccasins. You know don't just take overnight to make. Um, I'm not gonna be making Navajo moccasins. Uh, we'll probably start off with some regular. Um, Just material, textile type moccasins. More material, using a uh, material, um, like fabric material and stuff. So that's uh, just this kind of lay so everybody can kind of learn how to set up your moccasins. So usually, you know, for fabric, you have this type of uh, material just uh, for practice. Usually you can mix. It's good to practice on like little kids and stuff too when you first start out to make moccasins. I know I think my first pair of moccasins were probably um, some I made for my daughter. She was dancing or she wanted to dance fancy shawl and so we uh, took it upon ourselves, my, me and my wife. Um, I know a little bit, back then I knew a little bit about um, how to use a sew machine and so we used kind of a sew machine and our moccasins and we just kind of asked a, a, quite a few different people how to do them and then we kind of looked and did our own little research checked out a couple of different videos and um, pretty much we had to um, ask around you know fam family members you know um, relatives you know ask you know, how they made theirs and kind of looked at them and then finally decided to make our own moccasins it was uh, like a lot of things that that we do, you know, it's kind of a family family effort. I mean, I've had moccasins uh, as a little kid. I was gonna have them. I'll show you my little moccasins, the baby moccasins, but um, they're they went back to storage. <laughs> we brought I brought them out. We brought them out. We found them, and then I forgot to bring them today. So I'll I'll bring them next time, um, and I'll show you a couple of other moccasins that. Um, that me and my wife made a while back um, that are material so today we're going to kind of start off just showing you real basic you know how to get like measurements and stuff like that and then some of the materials or items you'll need you know uh, just to get ready for the for the next time we meet or next time I talk again we'll, we'll continue on so we'll get as far as we can get today um, so first step is uh, to figure out the foot size um, so 
the best way to figure out a foot size is to actually get the f the foot measured. Um, usually, you know, I had my my daughter would actually um, stand up. Um, make sure when you do the measurements for the feet. I know when I used to have orders or do orders or moccasins, you know, I had <clears throat> you would make the the person or the customer the individual um, stand up and they would have to stand up straight and what we do is you know with the pencil um, you can get some you know you can if you can you can find um, um, a box or something a box or some sort of cardboard works best you can even use paper is fine but if you want to continue making like moccasins I think the reason I use boxes or you know like a bit a stencil that's gonna last longer is because usually I end up making more moccasins because when we do a lot of like powwow dancing we wear moccasins every weekend so we get a lot of wear and tear on them so and then it's faster if I already have the 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 um the cutout I think I also you know when I was thinking about it I was thinking about how I, I kind of really first started too I, I bought this pattern um at this store or dancing bear store we have this pattern um of how to make a moccasins and it's kind of the cheyenne style and it ha it's pretty good you know the patterns you can it, it has a it's just like if you buy a pattern um from like walmart or something like that you know those patterns that sell for dresses and stuff it's got that real thin paper material that you know sets up and kind of has the drawing already done for you and same thing for the this um this pattern that you can buy from Dancing Bear. It has the patterns, different foot size patterns in it. And, you know, but for me, I noticed, you know, my, my foot is pretty wide. I don't know, most Indians, we have like a wide foot. So those, you know, those foot pre, pre drew out foot patterns didn't work for me. And it doesn't work for a lot of us because <laughs> we have wide feet. So, you know, that's the thing I found about with those, um, that pattern, but I still used it. You know, I cut it out. I made it last because, you know, like I said, it's those paper, that paper material with the with the with the template on it and I end up gluing that paper material on some cardboard and I cut them out and so you know I was making moccasins like that that's that's good for you know if you're making kid moccasins because kids moccasins are you know their, their feet are still skinny and not like ours that we get older old, old like red foot stone toes foot wide feet <laughs> but uh, anyway um, so you know it's best it's easiest to to measure a person's foot you know while they stand make sure they're standing straight up and then you just kind of outline and trace them and then you know usually what i'll do is go about a half inch half inch to about an inch out once i have this pattern you know i'll actually cut it out and put it on um what's called latigo um this is why i got this stuff out um, you can buy this um, this latigo. It's just, this is uh, material, this white material that they use for um, that they use uh, to make saddles. Um, I think you can buy this material. It's the best. It's pretty thick. Um, that's that one's not very thick, but this one's pretty thick here. This moccasin. Um, so you see how thick that is. Um, the way they the moccasin. This is like a Navajo style. It's a little different how they put it together. Um, But uh, yeah, so you'll need to get some um, latigo, and this is what you're gonna make your sole out of. Once you get your measurements, um, this this material is pretty good. You can use, also use like belt leather, some thicker uh, belt leather. I know people will use the the belt leather, and then they'll add another layer of uh, of some sort of uh, rubber sole. Um, you can also buy that uh, from different areas, and the rubber sole will help. You know, just help it with the life of the, the the moccasin and so you know once you get that foot measurement of the person that that's standing straight up make sure their feet are straight up because once you if you you stand crooked or anything lean back your foot you know you won't, won't get a very accurate measurement and so you know usually i'll get this foot measurement and that's for the sole um usually for the sole you know i'll cut about maybe um when i cut the sole i'll use this as a, as a mark measurement but I'll, I'll cut it just a little bit bigger than than the foot so pretty much the moccasin will kind of be like this um just like a half inch bigger um and usually you know um some people will just make their foot 
um, when they do the foot drawing, they'll make it just you know straight across, and it'll be like a real wide duck foot kind of duck feet. It looks better. Uh, I've noticed to make it kind of pointy at one at the end to make your your your, your sole a little pointy. Um, that way, the the shoe looks a lot better. Uh, for women, make it pointy towards the middle. Uh, it depends on the the toe. Look, some people have uh, like my toe is bigger. My big toe is big. But some people have uh, a toe in the middle that's the second one that's a little bigger. I don't know. I, um, I find that most women have that kind of foot. Anyway, however your toe is adjusted, you can, you know, that's where you're going to kind of make the highest point. Uh, so my toe is a little big, so I would do a, a pattern out like that and kind of shape it more like a, looks like Bigfoot foot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's what you do it for the latigo you would um, just get this cardboard cut out and you know, put it on the latigo and just trace it around and that would be your like your foot imprint um, if you look at these Navajo moccasins they did a lot they did like about maybe a, an inch longer or an inch thicker than the actual person's foot um, just because they, they end up you know making that curve to make it um, rise up on the side versus what we're gonna do for as far as moccasins um, I don't know if I showed you my moccasin. I, uh, I beaded these ones. These are actually because uh, I spent so many time, so much time. Um, you know, like I said, every every weekend I was dancing at a powwow. Um, it was wet. Sometimes it was raining. You know, even times snowing. <laughs> uh, depending on the powwow, so I end up you know um, deciding to do like this instead, where I um, bead um, just actually make make the tip of the moccasins and then I just bought like a, um, a water shoe <laughs> this one you can really say look that's Bigfoot's foot um, it's a water shoe you can buy these at Walmart uh, but it just made it easier I also put a sole in there because it just really helped with me for me um, and so like I was changing these out my the bottom of my sole a lot of times and so many times and you know it's really hard when it gets wet if you're using materials you know like like old school type materials we're using um, the buckskin hide um, this is some tan hide or smoke tan hide um, this is actually um, um, moose I got a did a good trade so I'm going to be making the tops of my moccasins with this um, and then it's going to be I'm going to beat it eventually um, but uh, yeah I got this ready for the tops of my moccasins so you'll need um, if you're gonna do that, you'll you'll need that. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty basically all I did was uh, actually my brother actually made these moccasins for me. They uh, he cut this pattern out and kind of did. Oops, just knocked over my other camera. Not as bad as last week when <laughs> last week I knocked over the the big old lamp I was using because I didn't want it to look so yellow. I wanted it to look more natural. So I had this other light. It supposedly gave me natural light, so I went so so, so yellow. <laughs> but anyway, the material. You know, I just kind of cut a pattern out. This I use the the Paylone, um fabric stiffener, and then um, of course some um, some um, some canvas, and then just sewed it on. So pretty much, this is what you'll be kind of doing if you're going to do. Um, um, this is what we're going to do actually. We're going to make a moccasin. This is not really a moccasin. Um, I, was, I don't know what we were making, but it's just a, a, a thing that I kind of sewed up real quick. But uh, this is actually um, would be for the top of your moccasins. Usually I made them, when I used to make the moccasins, I used to make them like two layers. One um, either with uh, canvas. This canvas, you know, I just have a piece of canvas that I found. And canvas is good because you can actually, you know, draw on it or you know use a pencil and mark on it and do some some things that you can see, you know, because some sometimes patterns or sometimes material is like too dark. If you try to draw on this with the pencil, it's hard to see. But you, you can draw on this side; it's a little easier to see. Um, and so, you know, to get those measurements, back to what I was talking about, I was talking about the the measurements of the foot. It's probably the first thing that you would have to do um, 
is get that the sole measurement and um, some of the materials that you'll need like I said this is going to be a two-part series I think right now um, today we're just going to kind of go over we kind of have an overview a little bit so you guys can start you know, getting your material ready so that we at the next you know next little class that I do um, next week next Tuesday here um, at four um, we can start to actually, you know, if you want, you can go ahead and cut things out um, or get the materials if you don't have them now. So um, some of the things that you'll need, um, you know, of course, you'll need the latigo and you'll need the material um, for the top of the moccasin. Um, and this is just really for practice, you know, to practice with the, a cloth um, type of moccasin is really easy just to get some practice in. Or if you want, you can go straight to um, actually doing a, a, a regular moccasin. Um, man, that's what I forgot to grab. I forgot to grab the latigo that I had. Um, at the storage. Um, but you'll need latigo. You'll need the you know, material that you're going to use for the top of the moccasin. Uh, like I said, you'll need paper or cardboard to measure your foot. Uh, pencil is always good um, if you're really fancy you can use chalk uh, I know a lot of people seamstress tailors like to use chalk when they draw on, on, on material it's a lot it's pretty good because you know the chalk will, will actually come off um, some of the things you'll probably need of course you know you, you need a scissor um, I don't know what that, that you'll, you'll need it all because um, to get to penetrate some of this uh, those latigo um, it's really thick. It's really hard. Um, this you can actually this um, you can actually shape this a little bit. Like this is shaped a little bit of water shape, so it's turned. Um, but to penetrate this is really kind of really hard and tough. Some people can't do it. Um, you can you know if you have a a good pair of pliers, you can actually use a needle and push it through. Um, some of the needles. So you'll need an awl. This is all. Um, and actually, this is kind of a handheld awl. There's other awls that are smaller with the little wood thing. Um, that you can push through the lateral you'll need that you know um, you'll need a, a lighter um, you don't have to get a one this big um, you also need um, needles um, like when I when I when I do stuff um, let's see focus 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 I use a needle this is a, a Glover's needle and you know Glover's needle can you read that backwards uh, Glover's needle there's like um, about two uh, Glover's needles are a needle that's really sharp, uh, but uh, uh, but um, they're usually shaped kind of like a triangle uh, on one end, where the eye, the opposite of the eye, um, and so you don't want to. You can cut yourself because those it's shaped kind of like a triangle, and you can slice yourself if you don't watch out. Um, and so, what are the thumbs? So um, it's good to get these Glover needles. Um, this is a, a smaller size that I, I like to use because it's easier. You also need um, Latigo. Um, what's Latigo? Um, um, yeah, so you'll need a good pair of pliers. Um, I have these little husky. I think someone got these for me a Christmas gift one year. It came in a little packet. But these are really good. I like to use these kind of uh, wide ones. But I also have needle nose, uh, needle nose pliers help when you're um, handling these Glover needles. Like I said, or they're sharp on. You know, like I said, they're they're shaped like this. They're on, on, on kind of like a, a triangle. And if you try to hold and you, you slip, your your fingers are going to get sliced. Uh, so I'll use either like a glove. Um, um, you can, if you're really savvy, you can cut, you know, make yourself a little glove or whatever. Or you can use regular, um, like leather gloves, if you if you if you want to. But it's you know, I, I like to use the pliers. It's a lot easier. To handle but you can get yourself also you'll you'll need some uh some latigo i mean latigo um you'll need some some of this stuff um i don't know why i'm trying to call this latigo um 
but it doesn't matter what color um, type of string this is uh, sinew uh, this is actually um, like a imitation sinew um, if you have real sinew that works too um, sinew is uh, basically uh, a material that we come that we can get from the animals uh, real sinew if you go hunting you'll find it on the back um, along the the spine area you'll find the sinew um, but they used to use that to, to create a string and you can buy this imitation sh sinew um, you, see, you can probably see that I've been using this uh, I use this sinew a lot this, uh, this color is black I'm, I'm almost out um, you can actually split it make it a little thinner um, that's what I usually do I'll split um, depending on what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be sewing you'll, you'll need that to, to end up splitting it a little bit um, but if we're gonna do like a cloth you can actually use the sew machine to um, sew them on um, so I'll probably show you um, how to do a cloth moccasin first and then after that we'll <coughs> my voice is all crazy we'll get into actually doing a leather um, out of uh, moccasin with the buckskin on top and you know doing speed work a little bit and getting that started um, but for now you know I want to kind of show you the real basics uh, the things that you'll need uh, for the next class um, so these are just the materials you'll need really sinew You'll always, you know, like you get, if you need some, you know, you'll also need some sweet grass to kind of, you know, cleanse yourself. And a lot of times, like I said, this, when you do um, native, um, native type um, um, crafts, it's good to, to use, you know, some medicine to kind of get you into that mood. Because sometimes a lot of us are in, in the rat race, you know, burn a little bit of um, sinew, burn some cedar, burn some, you know, some pine, burn some, um, some cedar and you know bless yourself cleanse yourself get yourself prepared and that's all a part of the process when you make make things from um, and also you know give it at the same time it's also good to do that to some of the animals that you're going to be working with you know like the buckskins is obviously where animals or leather um, comes from some of the animals that we use so it's good to you know cleanse that off and get that good good feeling good scent going in and it just it just helps out a lot um, and so you know like I said some of the needles this is actually my beading needle um, case inside of it you know I have different sizes this is a really big type of Glover needle I'll use also um, this is only ser serrated serrated this is more of a um, kind of a quilting kind of needle um, I use that when I when I do like um I don't know if I have a Glover's needle in this thing. Oh yeah, I do. Um, this is kind of a Glover's needle. I'll show you. Hmm. Hold on. So I um, uh, probably can't even see this on the camera, but you'll see the end is kind of um, shape a little bit different. But uh, that tip or that the bottom part is where the, it's really sharp. So that's where you don't want to be pushing through with your hand because you'll slice your fingers. Um, so that's a few things you'll need. You also, you know, like I said, as far as um, tools, uh, I think I got everything. So you'll need to get some Latigo if you don't have any of that. You know, go to your craft store or whatever. And hopefully get that, order that up. Um, you'll also need some material for the top of the moccasin to 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 sew it on um and if you want to get fancy too we can we can get fancy um like i said um once you get the measurements um of the of the foot um it's good to um once you get the measurements of the foot you have to get the measurements um of kind of what's going to go over the canvas or the material that's going to go over the foot so how do you get that um, I think a good way is to, that I kind of learned was to use a piece of string, uh, with that string you're going to basically outline this whole thing and then leave it about half an inch. So, and then you're going to create kind of a, a U.
So also you'll also need um well, I'm remembering this, um, you'll also need some bias tape. Uh, bias tape is this stuff here. If you don't know what bias tape is, it's this edge edging part. Um, it comes in little packets. Um, I don't know if I have one around here. Um, where's my kid? My kid's hiding. Um, but yeah, you'll get bias tape. And it's good to use bias tape because usually if I want to make uh, my moxin top, out of two materials, I will use um, like um, a kind of a cotton on one side and then the canvas on the other side. Um, and then I also do um, um, the reason I have two layers is um, normally on the first layer on the canvas, I'll draw a design or I'll use um, um, what's called it's like a um, what's it called? Witch's stitch, I think that's what it's called witch stitch but it's just a material that um, it's a layer of um, iron on kind of material um, it's really thin you can get it in different um, thicknesses and layers um, it's best to get the thinnest one if you're gonna do like um, if you're gonna be able to sew designs and the way you do that is you'll you'll, you'll you know whatever material you have um, like I said you can draw designs on your material and then you know you cut out pieces that you'll need to sew together like if you want a really cool say this is the moxin you want a cool design you you kind of would uh would cut out you know whatever design you would you would want on there and then you could cut it out like say you know you kind of do like a me geometric design and you could cut that out and kind of just you know design this little material so you have two different color material oh, i don't know if you can even see that but just like two different color material, you cover it, and then you'll um, you can cut out different designs. Um, I'll have to show you that a little better once I maybe next week once we get into really actually cutting things up and putting the materials together. So I was just reading the message. Um, is there any Thomas? Are there any comments or something? Uh, uh, um, Thomas is watching the comments. Um, Ranger went about um, said twenty. It's a nineteen minutes ago. I need not put boxes, but other than that, there's no um, no questions or comments. Oh, okay. Well, these moccasins are not for sale. Like I said, these are my daughter's. <laughs> she grew up. Uh, and there's a whole story that goes with the moccasins. Um, you're not, um, there's Navajo people, Nay people, you never let another person wear your moccasins because, you know, kind of, because that's like really personal. You can take, like say, you can take your spirit away if you let someone else wear your moccasins. Or, you know, or if you want to help, like your kids or something, you, you can give them your moccasins, give them that, that kind of spirit, that strength. And so, you know, it was always important to, and, you know, hygienic. Hygienically speaking, too, it's not good to share other people's moccasins in case they have a foot. Something's wrong with their foot or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, we don't really share um, once we have the moccasins. And so these are the are my daughter's um, moccasins that she have. I just wanted to kind of feature them today. You know, something that you can as aspire to. We'll make maybe make those one day. Um, the material is really nice compared to my moccasins, my modern moccasins that I that I use are these guys you know like I said all I did was just create this flap and then um, beat on top of it and then I can remove it when these get old and run down they're already getting pretty pretty flat and pretty holy like I said I, I wear these all the time and I get a hole in it all the time and the leather seems to you know I get a hole in it faster than than this these moccasins so I choose to do it that way but anyway getting back to um, getting the measurements for um, what's going to cover the top of your foot um, you can use uh, you can use whatever kind of string you have whether it's um, you know cotton or this I have this Nymo or and so what you will do I'll get let's see let's get this camera where it needs to be um, let's switch over this camera so you're going to kind of do take this and you'll just kind of uh, measure along the whole foot and this is kind of a real ancient indian technique um, it'll kind of give you 
how much cloth you'll need to, to cover it. And so you would measure, kind of get, get it like that. And then you would um, actually add, at the end, you want to add it, actually add about an inch. Because you're, what you're going to do is you're going to be, you're going to be sewing this material. And so, you know, that's what I would do, or that's how you would do it. And so you have this string that you have. Once you have the string, you're going to create, um, turn this over. Um, with the string, you're going to create this thing. That This is um, the design that you're going to do on the um, actual, I'll just do it on here. Actual material. Like, so you have this, and you've got the string where you're going to measure. And so you kind of put your string where you need it because you, you got the measure on the foot and this is you're going to kind of create this thing and so you kind of even it out <coughs> make sure it's good that's kind of a real um kind of a way you just kind of create this thing um so let me draw this out i think you could probably see it better um so you that's what you would do with the string you would create this uh line then once you get it um, on the material, once you get the material cut out, um, cut out, um, say this is your material, right? And you cut it out, and this is the top of the moccasin. You're gonna um, cut a T from here to here, and what what happens is this will open. Um, Dad. Yeah. Uh, the bottom, I'm going to be using what's called Latigo, uh, this white material. Um, um, you can use that. If you don't have that, if you're just learning how to do this right now, you can just use, um, say you have some leather or something, like some leather, even pleather would work. Or you can even just use some canvas for the bottom just to, to kind of practice. Um, cutting the sole out, um, you can, um, and then later on you can buy the latigo, which is a, um, a material that they use to make saddles, um, or like a, a, a kind of thicker uh, belt material. Um, just make sure it's wide enough for the foot to fit on there um, that you can use to cut out. Um, I'll also use like a, a roller. Thomas, can you grab my? my cutting blade that rolls the rolling oh. cutter um or i don't know i think i might have it i thought i grabbed all my my material and tools i think i'm going to grab that but uh yeah you'll need some good scissors um some people even use uh, you can either use glue too you need some glue like tacky glue um tacky glue some people kind of it's fine, Thomas. I found found one. You know, I'm getting back to the to the the measurement. So that's kind of the measurements you'll need. Like I said, you use a, a piece of string. Um, let me get this camera right. So let me mock things over. So like I said, you'll draw. Um, you basically do this T shape, but on the material. Um, and you, if you have a good cutting board, that works too. Uh, like I said, I have uh, all the materials. And like I said, pencil works just fine. Um, like I said, you create this, uh, this line using your string to create the top of the moccasin. And it's fairly simple. Um, like I said, if you buy that, um, Usually I'll just make a couple marks and kind of draw it out like that. Um, and usually I'll go like, when I do this, I'll also add an extra, like a, a half an inch to to this thing. So it's just a little bigger than that. So you add a half an inch to that. You can't, you can't even see that. But, um, but with the rotary cutter, I can cut this out pretty easy so usually so this is what I would do can you see that okay 
There we go. Um, just cut it out with the rotor. You can probably see it better with the black marker. But the, yeah, just be careful with this rotor, rotary cutter. Um, I, I've known people, you know, taught classes where they would cut their, accidentally cut their hand. <laughs> And so this is kind of a real quick makeshift one. And then you'll you can measure it if you want. If you want to get real technical, you can measure stuff. Um, so this is about eight inches. Now right now I'm not getting too technical. So you, this you you'll leave about half inch. So your foot, and you can actually if you have the moxin, you can put it the moxin in there. And then you want to go to. Um, you can also get measurements of the foot, how far, but you know normally it's just about that, that far that you want to go. So you cut the T, set T in the middle. Um, like I said, if you want to get more technical, you can measure. Um, if you have the person that you're doing the moxins for, you can measure their foot and make sure it fits. And so this is this creates the top. See how it. Um, so this will be the side of the moccasin, and these two will actually come together. So that's just the first step. I think uh, next week, you know, just to have everybody, you know, gather the materials and you know get the things ready to go. Um, this is just like the first few steps. The first few steps is just to uh, get the measurement of the person's foot, your foot, whoever's foot, and make sure it's standing straight up and get those measurements and then you know once you get that you can use the string technique to get the kind of u the u shape and that's just a, a real um, quick and easy way to get the shape around your foot like I said um, once you do these um, these will go like this so this is actually going to be the moccasin if you can see that okay but um yeah so that's real real basic um like i said if you have this material if you want to add designs like this is gonna this is actually going to be the interior um when i make the moccasins uh, i make them inside out um so i could sew like um i could sew this um we're gonna probably do like a cloth uh moccasin i could sew these two pieces together um when i sew the moccasin or and I sew the um, material together. I'm gonna sew another layer on top of this. So I'm actually gonna cut out two pieces. But the first layer is just gonna be by itself. Um, like I said, if you want, you can add some of that. Um, if you get, if you want to get fancy and actually create a design and you know, sew like a little design on here on the top of the moccasin, um, we can. I can kind of show you that a little bit more. I'll break out my my sew machine and I'll have my little pieces that I've cut out and to do that um, like I said you'll you'll need some of that iron-on material um, which I can't think of the name right now for some uh, iron-on material um, or you can actually use glue too some people use um, fabric glue uh, they'll cut their their design or whatever they want to put on the top of the the moccasin like you know like when i say design like design like if you want to make a flower on top of your mocks and you can do that with you know this is beadwork so beadwork is a little different but if you want to do like fabric um work um you could do that and put your design on here and so you're, you're you've got your designs going um so but we're going to do a real basic um material so this and so once you have your design on that side you'll have a lot of uh, string on this side right uh, if you have a moccasin, or um, if you sewed through this thing and you have a, a lot of string sewing on this side, and you don't want that string to be showing, or when you put your foot in, you don't want to that string to get caught on your toenails or something, uh, that can really hurt. Um, so you put another layer uh, material on top, and usually I'll use two layers. Like I said, this top part is like a canvas, and the bottom part is like a kind of a cotton material that will hide the um, applique work that you did on your, your material. And also, I'll also add, um, um, this is called bias tape to the edge, kind of do a bias tape all around this, these edges to make it a little thinner, to make it a little stronger. Um, you can actually use bias tape for string. Um, I'll show you my, my daughter's moccasins. I have to dig in my storage 
to get the moccasins. I've been really busy um, doing other um, <coughs> box orders and other um, craft material orders that I didn't even get a chance to set up uh, for everybody. But I really just wanted to do that basic real setup, things that you'll need. Uh, like I said, some of the tools you'll need. Um, of course, you'll need. Um, I'll also add add to the list as a rotary cutter if you can. That that really helps. A uh, good pair of scissors, um, even a cutting board, um, like I have here. Um, Joann's, Walmart. Uh, of course, you'll need your your medicine. Uh, good pair of pliers, uh, Glover needles, um, sinew. Sinew, like you can buy a whole pack, you can get a whole big roll of sinew, or you can get the, the smaller packs. Um, like I, I have the smaller packs, and you can actually split this to make it thinner. Um, it comes pretty thick once you get it going. Um, so you need that, and a piece of string. Um, those are just some of the real basic materials, you know, of course, you know, need pencil. Yeah, and try not to use a pin because a pin will end up bleeding if you have the material that you're using as fabric, it'll bleed. Or even if you don't want to use pin on, um, on your 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 actual um, leather, but um, yeah, so a pencil is the best to use. Or if you're you're really fancy, you can use chalk. Um, but uh, you know, good good scissors is always good. Uh, I think I'm talking in circles now. But yeah, those are some of the materials you'll need for next next time you meet. You know, we'll get get your measurements in, get your get the things that you want in a measurement measure for whoever's foot. And then we'll get those kind of cut out. That way we can get right into kind of sewing the top on or actually adding a design to it. So if you're going to do applique work, uh, maybe I'll do another applique um, series or talk about applique work that you, I can show you guys how to do with the sew machine and using that witch, um, that iron-on material. Uh, like I said, you can buy that stuff at Joann's, Walmart, or your local um, craft store sewing sewing place whatever so that's all I have for today you know I just want you guys to get a little prepared for next week we're gonna get into making these moccasins uh, so I'm gonna see how many maybe two or three to say three to four part series on moccasin making you know I figure this is good for the for the for this um, holiday season uh, to help people you know stay at home safe and have something to do learn a new new trade new technique and learn something you know so you'll be ready for next year november for moxin appreciation month <laughs> um, you'll be ready just kidding or if you're getting ready to powwow if your kids want to learn how to powwow dance um we'll be showing them how to make moccasins it's very simple um so right now we're going to be um concluding a little bit and so yeah so pick out your material you know get that going get all the things that you need um let me know in the comments i'll check the comments weekly kind of kind of respond um so next week we'll continue on our talk with uh, moccasins and um i'll tell a little story about the, the navajo moccasin um, where they were where they kind of came from and stuff um and so there's a different form of navajo moccasins there's, these are the 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 kind of high 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 heel i almost said no um kind of a high I don't know high top style there's another form I've even seen people they made the Navajo Moxin into like a, a kind of a sandal kind of a croc <laughs> one and then there's the, the, the long the, the really high heel or high high top one where that goes almost up to your ankle and usually my wife my daughter will have a wrap a uh, piece of Moxin wrap that goes around with those Moxins also but yeah, so today, you know, I just want to conclude with that. Thank you guys for whoever's tuned in, watching. Um, we'll continue with a little series next week, and this is all to help um, with uh, to our well-being. You know, like I said, you know, burning the cedar, burning the sage, you know, helps us. You know, a lot of us are going through a little bit of mourning. Um, you know, whether it's a loss of a life of a, of, a, of a relative or friend you know or just you know a morning through that you you're not used to it's going through kind of a ps ptsd of not being able to you know continue life normally you know, going to restaurants and and things like that you know um i think we're all in this together i think doing a learning the new craft and doing craft work is really helpful you know it's time consuming and, and, and you're able to to give someone you know something that you made from your hand 
Um, it's really important. It's very good, very therapeutical, as we say. Um, very, you know, it's good self-care to learn something new, to, to create something with your hands uh, versus, you know, um, I was listening to a talk this morning. Uh, uh, another gentleman was talking about um, learning about things that are important in your life. It's good to learn things that are, are good for your life, importance in your life, versus, you know, wasting time watching a TV or the internet and none of, none of that things is actually going to benefit you if, if you're just sitting there watching TV or watching a show or going on the internet unless you're watching something that's constructive but just watching TV show is not really benefic beneficial you know as a traditional traditional teaching you know we're always taught to to learn things that are beneficial for yourself and also for other people that you can make and a lot of the times the native crafts are very beneficial for for mutual people to the people to share um, your knowledge or to share your your creations with someone versus you know when you're when you're, when you're doing something like just watching TV there's no um, you can't share too much with someone else you know you can't really give any you know you could share you know an episode of someone's binge watching something you're watching but um but you know that that traditional teaching is to you know learn something that's shareable with other people that you know helps you make you makes you feel good makes other people feel good uh, versus you know things that don't are negative towards you or don't make you don't have any benefits towards anything you know besides entertainment uh, but anyway I just wanted to 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 just touch on that just a little bit uh, maybe get you thinking a little bit but uh, we'll see you guys next week uh, this is Richard Decrane signing off. You know, smudge, don't judge. You know, have a good Christmas. Um, if you practice Christmas or celebrate Christmas, Christmas Eve, you know, have some good food. Make yourself something good to eat. Uh, I know I'm going to be making some good food and eating some good food. My wife's got some a lot of things planned. We bought our, our ham. We like to have Christmas ham. So that's what we're going to be doing. My my daughter's going to make some vegetables and you know, we're going to make some, some really good stuff. So looking forward to that. Um, other than that, we'll see you guys. Have a good, good, happy, good, happy holiday, and stay safe. You know, stay home, stay safe. You know, wash your hands, and do all the things to keep your family safe. You know, um, and do something. You know, proactive for yourself. Get out and walk. Uh, you know, learn something new. So, all right, guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. We'll talk to you guys soon next week. So prepare for next week. You got your homework. And I think I covered everything. So 